Good morning, friends. Today we've got the classic Roland XP10 synthesizer, a bit of an entry-level synthesizer in its day, but it was still a great leap forward from the previous generation. This one is in good condition and works well, but as we scroll across, you will see that it's got a key neatly missing. Let's fix it. Had to order one from Britain, 20 bucks for a key. Can you believe it? Nah. If we zoom in a little bit, You'll see that the other keys are anchored in by a little triangle of plastic there. It's missing from here, so there's literally nothing to mount the key on, so we're gonna have to improvise. Now, I'm not gonna say that this is a good way to do it or even the right way to do it, but I'm gonna take a little cable tie and loop it through the hole and loop it through there. Hopefully, it'll get us playing. Little spring was provided with the key when I bought it, luckily. And if I end up selling this keyboard, I'll certainly tell the buyer that this is the way I've repaired it, because that would be the ethical thing to do. Okay, that's almost in the right position. Give it a twist. I suspect what we'll end up with is just a bit of a wobbly key. And on an old keyboard like this, that's probably not going to be too much of a concern. The other keys are in terrible shape anyway, so it's never going to be brilliant quick spray with some lubricant just to take away the nasty squeakiness. Don't forget to reconnect everything that you disconnected. In this case, the joystick wire here and these two, which return to their home positions neatly. Looks like we're good to go.
On the back things are fairly simple, our usual power in there, then we've got headphones left and right out, a socket for an expression pedal or a damper pedal, and MIDI in, out and through. I have a feeling this might have been the last time or the last model on which Roland put a MIDI through, or that might have been the RS5, I'm not sure. Anyway, moving on, because this predates USB just by a whisker, we've got the old interface here. I can't remember the name of this type of interface but you've got switches for Mac, PC and normal MIDI. It was a bit of a clunky and unwieldy system but it did allow you to speak to computers. Okay, so it's all sounding really good. There are a few parts I didn't show you during the disassembly of the keyboard where things were looking pretty dicey, but it turns out the XP10 is invincible, still going strong. Here's a link to subscribe to Gear Facts, here's a couple of other links to things that might interest you, and look forward to seeing you on the next one.